Isaac Newton, born in the 17th century, is one of the world's greatest geniuses. After all the discoveries he made, I am sure his name will be remembered forever. He has written his name in gold letters in history for his enormous contribution to humanity by developing science on many other subjects such as the law of gravity. Without further ado, let's move on to the video. On January 3, 1643, his mother Hannah went into labor. An hour or two after midnight, on Christmas morning, January 4, 1643, at Wool St. Horp, near Grantham, England, the baby Newton was born. Newton was a very weak child and even in his early days was not expected to survive, how could they have known that a goose laying golden eggs had come into the world? He was named after his father, a rich farmer who had died three months before his birth. The name Isaac comes from the prophet named Isaac in the Bible and the Quran. According to the belief, when God announced that they would have a child, Prophet Abraham, who was very old, and his wife Sarah, who had never had a child until that day, laughed at this good news. God therefore decreed that the child's name should be Isaac, a word meaning to laugh. When Newton was four years old, his mother married a rich clergyman and moved in with her new husband. His mother left Newton with his grandmother and Newton stayed with his grandmother for seven years. This traumatic situation caused Newton to hate his family, especially his stepfather. From the age of 12 to 17, Newton lived in the home of William, an apothecary, where he became fascinated with both alchemy and the apothecary's stepdaughter, Miss Story. Her mother returned when her husband died seven years later, leaving her with a sizable inheritance. At the age of 12, he began his education at King's School in Grantham, finishing in 1661. For a time his mother took him out of school to become a farmer, but Newton had no interest in farm work. While his mother thought Newton was engaged in farm work, Newton was actually constantly studying the sky and the stars, reading books, and taking notes. Eventually, he convinced his mother that he should go to school and prepare for university. And return to school. At the age of 19, he became engaged to Miss Story, the stepdaughter of William the Apothecary, with whom he had had a childhood crush but their relationship ended due to Newton's intensive studies. Newton never married later in life and no other relationships are known, he is only said to have remembered this one. Newton entered Trinity College, Cambridge in 1661. He entered the school as a sizer, meaning that he worked and studied at the same time. At Cambridge, Copernicus and Kepler's theories were ignored, Galileo's work was not recognized and Aristotelian philosophy dominated the atmosphere. Newton studied algebra, geometry, and trigonometry for three years, learning Latin and ancient Greek. It was also during this period that he became acquainted with the works of Galileo and Kepler and was highly influenced by them. He also read the philosophical works of Descartes, Gassendi, Hobbes, and especially Boyle. Newton wrote the following note in Latin at the beginning of his notebook, Some Philosophical Questions, in which he wrote down his ideas, Plato is my friend, Aristotle my friend, but my best friend is truth. During his years at Cambridge, Newton did not stand out as a success among his fellow students. The plague broke out, revealing his genius and perhaps the reason we know his name now. In August 1665, 
Trinity College in Cambridge was closed due to the plague outbreak in London and Newton stayed at his farm in the town of Wool St. Horp until March 1667. These two years on the farm were very productive and he began to think about gravity during this period. His work on the farm also laid the foundation for differential and integral calculations. He combined the methods that had been used in the past such as finding the area, arc length and tangent with differential calculations. In a dark room on the farm, he created a spectrum of light by shining sunlight through a prism and realized that white light was not a unit by itself. In 1667, Newton returned to Cambridge when the university reopened and became professor of mathematics two years later. He stayed in Cambridge for about 30 years, talking to other scientists through letters and continuing to work alone. During these years, he prepared and completed his greatest work, Principia. As a result of his experiments with light on his farm, he realized that lens telescopes created imperfections, so he developed a reflecting telescope. In 1668, he attracted the attention of the scientific world with this telescope and became a member of the Royal Society in 1672. Isaac Newton published his book Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, one of the most important scientific works in world history, in Latin. In the book, he used geometry to prove the law of universal gravitation and explained that bodies attract each other in direct proportion to their mass and in inverse proportion to their distance. The book is divided into three main parts by Newton. In the first part, he praises Galileo's experiments and mathematically proves Kepler's laws. In this chapter, he explained the Newtonian laws of motion, as he called them. In the second part, he analyzed the motion in a fluid and made suggestions for the best ship design. In this part, his mathematical analysis of wave motions attracted attention. According to his scientific method, phenomena should first be observed, the laws of nature should be discovered as a result of these observations, and then the theory should be able to explain these events. According to Newton, nature is made of indivisible small particles with mathematical qualities and every event in nature is formed by the combination and dispersion of these particles. According to him, the aim of science is to generalize these events with mathematical theories through experiments. Newton made contributions in almost every branch of mathematics. Especially in analytic geometry, he developed methods for calculating the tangents of curves and the areas formed by curves. He found that these two operations are inverse to each other, developed solutions for slopes and called them flow methods because he imagined that quantities flow from one dimension to another. Newton's greatest contribution to science is in the field of mechanics. By combining the law of centrifugal force with Kepler's law, he established the law of gravitation. The principle of inertia known as Newton's laws of motion, the law that force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration, and the equality of action and reaction are among the most important laws of physics. I think the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Newton is gravity because this idea revolutionized the history of physics. Before Newton, Jonas Kepler had explained the elliptical motion of the planets purely mathematically, but he did not provide an explanation for why the planets stayed in orbit. Newton first thought of gravity in 1665, but did not publish his Principia until 1687. Newton first thought that if Kepler's laws were correct, 
there must be a gravitational force between the sun and the planets. He thought that if there was such a force, the planets would move in the way Kepler had described and gave the mathematical expression of gravity. Newtonian mechanics is a perspective that explains the motion in our immediate environment, quantum mechanics applies to subatomic particles, and relativity theories apply to galactic motion. Newtonian mechanics introduces some small deviations when calculating the orbits of large stars and planets, but for small bodies on Earth and engineering calculations these are so small that they can be completely ignored. There are also three laws known as Newton's laws of motion, the first of which is that a moving body continues its linear motion unless it is subjected to an external force. Secondly, the greater the mass of an object, the greater its resistance to a moving force. And finally, thirdly, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's laws of motion concluded that the universe is orderly and deterministic and influenced philosophy considerably. In addition, Newton looked differently at the phenomenon of light from a light source hitting an object and illuminating it, and he thought that light moves and has a finite speed. By using lenses and prisms, he was able to convert the spectrum of light back into white light. Newton created a spectrum of colors by passing sunlight through a prism through a small hole in a dark room and explained how rainbows are formed. In 1696 Newton was offered the directorship of the Royal Mint, which he accepted and moved to London. He took this job very seriously and launched a major campaign, especially against counterfeit coins. Newton loved life in London and no longer wanted to be too interested in academic studies. He was appointed head of the Royal Society in 1703 and remained in this position until his death. He was knighted in 1705. In 1706, he was elected president of the Royal Society. In 1708, he was awarded the title of Sir by Queen Anne. Isaac Newton died on March 31, 1727, at the age of 84 and was buried in Westminster Abbey. Of course, it is impossible to describe such a great person in a video. I am sure that Newton, who is always afraid of being forgotten, will live forever with his great works and his huge contributions to science. Now that you have watched this far, you can click the subscribe button right now below the video and like the video. See you in the next video.